This is the Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab, and it is here for 2022 with not many changes. However, it's still a solid truck. We're gonna show you around it today. We're super excited to take you around the outside, the inside, show you what neat features you get for just over $53,000. This will be a great video, folks. A huge thanks to Jacob from Orson Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Clarksville. Be sure to check them out in the description below. And if you like the video, consider liking and subscribing for more weekly automotive content. Apologies for the wind, let's get into it. At the front of the vehicle, it's that classic big strong Ram front that we have come to know and love. Love the chrome on the grill. It's gonna give you that more premium look um, than maybe some of the work trucks, which remember, this is an eight trim lineup. This is only number three up there. This is just above the work trucks. So having that chrome distinction is pretty nice. But a lot of non-LED lighting here, that's not good to see. Once you get into that 50 grand range, LEDs really should be standard. Um, you do have a fog light down. You have parking aids on this vehicle. All right, guys, looking at the side of the truck, these rims right here are nearly $1,600, but there's some nice big chrome rims. You need them for your pickup truck. This $100 Delmonico Red is kind of an opinion splitter here at Gas Guzzlers. Colin says thumbs down. I say thumbs up, but maybe not on this truck. Maybe it would look better on another vehicle. I do think it looks good with this bright blue e-torque badge contrasting it. Um, the e-torque is a mild hybrid system. We'll talk about that just a little more when we get to the engine. These black mirrors right here are here and have the power folding. That is part of the Bighorn Level B package, which is $2,555. Pretty good looking truck from the side profile. Let's get around to the back. Let's talk about the rear of the vehicle. Yeah, your big squared off Ram badge. You can get on different uh, trims of this vehicle, a multifunction tailgate where it can open either as barn doors or as a traditional tailgate, which is a pretty cool little feature. Tow hitch is easily accessible right there and all your connections for lighting are right there as well. Um, you can expect around 12,750 pounds maximum towing capacity. That's the max towing configuration on this vehicle, around 2,300 pounds of payload max. You're probably gonna have a little bit less than that, but that's gonna depend on the configuration you get. Opening the back of the vehicle, you'll see we have a nice dampened tailgate, no spray and bed liner on this vehicle, and a lot of snow. This vehicle has the five foot seven bed. You can also get a six foot four bed. Under the hood of this vehicle, you will find a 3.6 liter V6 engine putting out 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. You can expect around 19 miles to gallon in the city, around 24 on the highway. Power is sent through an eight-speed transmission to two or four wheels. Now this vehicle does have the e-torque mild hybrid system that uses a motor um, kind of generator combo that's 48 volt system, it's battery powered and it replaces your alternator and it helps give the engine just a little bit of power boost, like when you're accelerating, maybe when you're towing and it improves fuel efficiency and gives you a little more power. Let's talk safety. You're not getting many active safety features on this vehicle. In fact, you're not getting active safety features, which I would like to see at this price point. However, you are getting a lot of other just general safety features because this vehicle does have a five star safety rating. In addition, it does have very important features to vehicles that tow, such as trailer sway control. Now let's get into the big horn. Of course, you have the key here. This does not have keyless entry, which is really unfortunate to see. It also doesn't have like any front end horn, and this is a pretty large step up. Of course, getting into the vehicle here, you can start it up. Overall, everything in this vehicle does feel pretty good. The seats are, they're comfortable, but this is a $600 cloth option. They're their cloth premium seats. And I don't know how I feel about that expensive of an option for premium cloth seats. That really just feels not right. Of course, the steering wheel, it feels pretty good. Of course, nothing special. Everything is within pretty good reach though. You have great vision, a bit of a thick A pillar here. But of course, this is a truck. You can see everything you need to see. Of course, you have solid vision there. Yeah, everything in here does feel really good. It's well made. Other than the seats and that option, I'm a pretty big fan of this interior. Now let's talk about the infotainment system here in the Bighorn. This now has the Uconnect 5 system, which is brand new on this trim level for 2022. 
course, this is a pretty solid system. It is very snappy. Not sure I like the look. And of course, this doesn't have like the physical buttons that some systems have. Everything does have to be controlled from the screen. However, as I mentioned, this is a pretty reliable and snappy system, so that's not much of a problem. It does have a bit of customization between light and dark mode or auto if you want it to switch automatically at night to a darker mode. But it doesn't have the um, customization that you might see in some of GM's screens, for example. Um, this does have driver profiles though, so if you want to have it save your driver settings, be that where you have your pedals, where your seat is adjusted, you can do that if you have multiple people frequently driving your truck. And this does have valet mode too, which is nice to see. Let's talk about the center area here for the Bighorn. Starting just below your screen, this is where you have your standard stuff, your volume controls, heated seats, heated steering wheel, as well as some of your other climate control options. As you move down, you have some of your parking features here as well as tow features here. And me and Jake thought it would be fun if you could flick these up kind of like an airplane, but you can't. You do have to push them down if you want to use those options, but that's very much just a nitpick. Over to the left here, you have your driver options to switch between reverse, neutral drive, all your standard automotive stuff, as well as some of your four-wheel drive options. If you move down here, you will find your power options your USB-A and C, which you have two of each, which is very impressive to see, as well as the old school aux port. And you don't have the cigarette lighter here, but that is actually up here in this little storage compartment up here, which is very good use of negative space. Of course, you move down, you have this tiny little pocket here. This isn't gonna be holding much, maybe a smaller wallet or a phone, but you do have phone storage right here, which is a bit of an interesting system. All you do is just put your phone in and it'll hold it up, or you can put it in sideways to hold it in place. Further down, you do have a traditional outlet all the way down here. And that's when you get to this big center storage area. There is a lot going on here. You have your cup holders right here, which are attached to a device that can be pulled out, but it has a lot of resistance. It isn't super easy to pull. Maybe over time, that's something that would loosen up and give you a bit more mobility. But as of right now, it is very tight. Of course, you do have the little nubs in here. These aren't the good mechanical nubs, but they are better than nothing. Moving back, you have some more storage, your coin holders, all that traditional stuff, the tray here. Of course, you can open this area up where you do have all your measuring stuff here, which is a very cool feature to have in a truck if you don't want to just quickly Google that. You can do the more inconvenient option of flipping this up and checking. You do have pretty good storage space down here. You do have a little segmented divider here, which does have all the old Ram trucks on it from the modern generation all the way to the first generation, which is a very cool little Easter egg in this truck. Overall, this area does have a lot of functionality and it does seem like it could be a bit more polished, but it certainly gets the job done. Now let's talk about the center screen of the Bighorn. I very much like this system. It does have that duality between being physical and digital. You have the large digital screen in the middle with two physical gauges on either side. Of course, you can control this center screen from the steering wheel. It is on the left side of the steering wheel. I think I've more often seen that placed on the right side, but this one is on the left. This is a very modular system. You have a lot of options and they are numbered, which is nice to see. As you can see, audio is number six, stop, start, number five, and so on and so forth. You have a lot of options here. It is very easy to edit also. If you go all the way down to your settings, you can customize what you're seeing in the little smaller portions of the screen. Of course, when you select this, you can kind of see the portion of the screen you would be changing has this faint red glow, so you know what you're changing before you change it. Overall, I very much like this screen. It gets the job done, and it has that cool little RAM badge, so bonus. Now you join me here in the back of the Bighorn, and this is a pretty spacious area. Of course, that's where I would sit if I was driving. A lot of leg room still, also have a lot of headroom. Great back seating area. If you look into the center area, you do have two cup holders with the nubs. However, they are not the mechanized nubs. They are just the little rubber bumps, but that is still better than nothing. So you move down, once again, you have two USB-A and USB-C ports as well as a full outlet. So once again, Ram has a lot of charging options here in the back. 
You do also have vents in the back, which you love to see, as well as a little storage compartment right here, which isn't gonna fit much, but could maybe fit a phone. You do have a center pull down, which once again has cup holders with kind of nubs. They're like the same type they have here, but they're a lot flatter. So they're almost like the half nubs, but even more half. Of course, put that back up. And this middle seat is actually pretty big. I think you could quite comfortably fit three adults back here and still have adequate space for everyone to sit. Starting at $53,815, this Ram 1500 Bighorn doesn't really offer anything special. However, that doesn't mean it's a bad vehicle. It does deliver up to standards on just about every aspect of it as a truck. However, it doesn't have the super fancy multi-purpose tailgate. It doesn't have the super cushy interiors like you're starting to see, but it does have everything you'd expect from a truck. It can tow, it can, it can carry stuff gets the job done and it rides comfortably. If you like videos like this and wanna see more weekly automotive content, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. And once again, huge shout out to Arsman, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Chrysler of Clarksville for getting us this truck today. We'll see you next time.